Hey everybody, I'm back with yet another video. Um, this one is about this very interesting um, radium painted watch I found at an antique shop. Um, and this one has some pretty interesting properties or things I suspect to be the case. Um, I was told by the person who sold it to me it was owned by someone who likely acquired it um, around the time or before the Korea, Korean War. Um, but anyway, you can see here that it has um, two radium painted hands and there are dots painted around um, here and so on and so forth. It also appears as though the numbers have been lined in radium as well. Um, and I'll kind of show you why I think that's the case. Um, but anyway, I can't really read the manufacturer very well, uh, but it's definitely an older watch and it also appears to have um, the face, the face of the watch appears to have been burned um, by radiation. Um, and as you'll see, this is actually a fairly hot watch. Um, even through the glass case, um, you'll see the gamma doses that the Canberra MRAD 103 picks up. Um, but anyway, so um, there's also, I don't know if you've noticed already, but do you see the darker spots here and here and here? Um, those, you'll notice, are shaped very much like the hands. And I suspect that's actually heavier radiation burns um, on the material occurring where the hands have been sitting for long periods of time. Um, I've moved them around to kind of um, show you guys that and also to get them kind of in line so I can measure them with my dosimeter easier and get the geometry to the point where the tube will detect the maximum amount of radiation. Um, and as an interesting side note, and this also happens to be the case with every radium sample I've found, um, this could not also be the case um, with every radium sample or every radium paint sample, but um, this one still happens to glow when you hit it with a UV flashlight, um, and I suspect that might be because some of the compounds that have broken down from the radiation over time um, still fluoresce under UV light, but not under um, not with the radiation that the radium puts out. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this light down here. Let me get my UV flashlight. And you can see the dots lighting up pretty nicely. And uh, you can, I don't know how well you can see it, but you can kind of see the numbers glowing. You take it away and it kind of glows for a second or two. Well, not a second or two, but a little bit. Um, but anyway, so there, by the way, um, the the black light test is not a good test to say, oh, there's radium in something, or oh, there's not radium in something. Um, it just so happens that these samples um, glow and are radioactive. I actually test them with a radiation detector as well to ensure that that's the case. Um, speaking of which, I'm going to go ahead and turn the overhead light back on. There we go. Give the camera a minute to adjust. And then I'm going to place my Canberra MRAD 103 over the top of the sample. It's also in source finder mode, which is why you hear the clicks. So that's my low level alarm going off. So somewhere in the neighborhood of um, 500 micro runtions per hour. It's actually a decent source, so I'm going to go ahead and turn off the alarm, and we'll give it a quick go with the Ludlum Model 3. Turn the audio on. We've already buried the needle, and I'm an inch and a half above the sample, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it up to times 10. That's about at a centimeter. Seeing about... 40,000 counts a minute, closing in on 50,000 counts a minute. But anyway, yeah, this is a fairly radioactive old watch. There's a reason it stays in my uh, sample container away from animals and people and things that I'm concerned about staying alive. Um, not that it'll, I don't think it'll kill anyone, by the way, um, immediately or creates like a immediate danger. But I'm also no physicist or health physicist, so there's that. Also another good reason to keep it kind of away in a semi-shielded container. Anyway, yeah, so 
it's just one of the cooler samples I've seen um, just because of the burn patterns and um, because it's really old. Um, yeah, and I always just use gloves to handle it because, uh, so one of the decay chain, or one of the products down the decay chain of radium-226 is radon. Um, so when you store this in a container, you have to worry about, A, radon leaking out and making sure that you're not, like, breathing in a bunch of it. Um, so it's kind of, like, ventilated. And B, um, when radon gas seeps out of these things, it can actually contaminate it and the surfaces around it. Um, because, you know, a lot of the things down the decay chain from radium and radon, um, you know, will actually just kind of like stick to the outside of plastic or various surfaces and then continue decaying from there. But anyway, so that's my non-physicist opinion, um, on kind of like some of the more interesting aspects of samples like this with radium in them. But anyways, cheers guys.